Hi there, hello everybody, and welcome to the Love City Arts Podcast. I'm Andre in the flow. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. Today I'm joined by Michael K. Woods. He is a singer, songwriter, producer based in New York and also Brooklyn. Thank you so much, Michael, for being on our episode today. Hi, Andre. Glad to be here. Yeah. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Um, when I saw all of your social media posts and the light that you were putting out into the planet, I knew that I had to have you on. And we've already been talking in the pre-interview about things that I'm really, really, really excited um, to share with our community. So, like I said, thanks for being here. Um, what are you doing today to share your art with the planet? Yeah, so I'm working on a project called Primal Instinct. Um, Primal Instinct. I've been putting a, like a lot of promo out. I think that what you probably might have seen on my social media accounts <laughs> with me like dancing in this very avant-garde type video, <laughs> everything for basic yes. art. Um, and Primal Instinct is basically this project that forces humans to think about the past so that we can go into the future uh, with this awareness that we are humans, um, that we are diverse people with different backgrounds, different lifestyles, um, sexualities, and um, the songs throughout this piece is just anchors us in that humanness, I'll say. Um, and I really want people to have that understanding um, about the project. Um, and I'm super excited. Hopefully I can um, release it mid spring. That's what I'm shooting for. Um, so I'm doing promo and everything for it now. So this is exciting. kind of part of that promo. That's so exciting. I love it. I love it. I'm happy to, <laughs> I'm happy to boost in any way that we can. Yeah. Uh, how many songs are in the series? Yeah. So right now it's about six to seven songs. So it's more like an EP basically, but I'll say six to seven with like interludes and intro and everything. So, um, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What, what does it mean for you to be a uh, human? You said this project focus, focuses on our humanity. What does it mean for you to be embodied as a human? Yeah, so in my case, I studied political science. Um, yeah, we talked about this. I went to Vassar College um, and also studied at the London School of Economics. And the one thing about the London School of Economics uh, I started um, d dibbing and dabbing in this theory. Um, his name, his theor this theorist's name is Carl Polanyi, and he basically had this idea of like what happens when humans feel like they're being detached from these institutions that are in place uh, within uh, free market capitalism. So basically, humans push back all the time when that happens, um, and I think you see that happening today. So that theory by this white man, <laughs> you know, really yeah. impacted me. Um, What's his name again? What's his, his name, name is Carl Polanyi. And the book that I read was called The Great Trans Transformation. I actually did an article about this um, theory in the article about the Amazon headquarters. Um, I wrote an article about that, which was... Where was the article published? Yeah, it was published on Medium. So I have a Medium page and everything. So I've put out pieces um, you know, every month, every two weeks, basically. That's so. exciting. So, like, you're in studios, you're dancing, <laughs> you're dancing around, you're, you know, you know, bringing us back to the humanity and linking our past, present, and future. You're writing on Medium. I mean, that's yeah. freaking fantastic. Yeah, but, like, that project is definitely, it definitely speaks to that. Um, like, I have one song called Sleep. And sleep is basically like, I want people to go to sleep because I feel like we have this culture of wokeness. Like, I believe in being woke, but I don't think no one is truly woke. I feel like we're all waking up, you know, and with mm. us waking up, um, we are unpacking these realities that have existed for centuries that have oppressed Black folks, our people and everything. And like... Um, I feel like unpacking this project in that manner um, is very important. And basically it's like- Yeah, because yeah. I, I, love, I love that you said that, um, that woke, to say that I'm woke is to say that I'm at the definitive end of the journey. It leaves mm -hmm. no room for expansion and growth and, and learning something new about people. Well, yeah. And Angela Davis, she's been put, putting forth this politics now where it's like, um, you need to get rest, like self-care. 
that's the most radical thing that we can do um, when we're moving forward within our revolutionary pursuits, basically. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you, do I believe you think your music is a, is a revolution? I, to be honest, I create music for what I'm going through at that time. And I hope that some people can find that, but it's never like intentionally like revolutionary. That's one thing I think that's egotistical. Uh, and also um, when I think about my music, I want it to have impact, but I gotta be real. Um, the stuff I'm doing is not mainstream stuff, you know? Um, it's, <laughs> I probably may not make millions off of this, but the thing about at the end of the day, I know I'm creating impact. Um, and I'm speaking to folks, um, and like I know I'm speaking to folks because I always get these messages of support that just keeps me going. So thank you all so much for <laughs> like yeah. um, supporting me because it's hard. You know, it's very hard, and that's just real. That's real talk. Yeah, yeah. When you say that it's speaking to folks, who are the folks that you're doing this for? You could, if you mm -hmm. could paint a broad stroke picture of who they are in your mind, um, who are they? Oh yeah, sometimes I joke around um, that <laughs> I was talking to like a marketing team basically. Uh, we were trying to figure out strategy on like the market, my project and everything. And these talks are still going. Every artist know you got to figure out your audience. And I joked around, I said, okay, I think my audience um, are black intellectuals. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a lot of white hipsters too, which is interesting and they know that. Um, so basically, uh, all these people come together to create these narratives, but I also want to speak to my community where I'm from. You get what I'm saying? So in this recent project, I got like some soul singing, you know, like very soul singing, because I feel like when you weave these theories and everything, it can seem very elitist, you know? <laughs> so I'm trying to watch that, um, because I want so many people to have impact from my music. I want the people who feel out like outside of the world because they've been told their lifestyle is wrong. Uh, I want the weirdos. I want everyone who, you know, can really just gr grasp the messages um, and come with a sense of care and humility uh, when analyzing uh, my songs because I put a lot of work into my lyrics and to, <laughs> Until my compositions, um, it's just not a, you know, a simple project or none of my projects are, I don't think. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're de it sounds like you're developing them for a, for, for a, a self-aware mind, people that are trying to do introspection and self-healing and actually pay attention. Yeah, and it's hard. It's super difficult to craft these audiences because I feel like in mainstream media, people want you to know, you know, what is your audience? And I'm still unpacking that too, um, because I feel like I get so many people who are engaged with my work, you know, um, and it's hard to really just come to terms with that, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. When did you first fall in love with your art? Like when did your art first find you? Oh my goodness, dude, dude this is hard. <laughs> I feel Why? Like, Why? Because I feel like, when did I first start? Oh, okay, I'll say when I was like a child, like four or five, basically. Uh, my mom, uh, she studied music. She went to conservatory, like she's classically trained. She has a very different background than me. Like I'm not, you know, classically trained. Like, I mean, I started becoming classically trained. Um, like I said, when, when I went to school and everything. Um, but um, with her, she was always like playing hymns, um, classical pieces in the house. You know, that's such a privilege. Like I always think about how much of a privilege that was um, that she used to like take me to these ballets. Like I remember seeing Alvin Ailey um, in middle school and that just changed my life. I was like, oh my goodness, I want to be a dancer. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, that was amazing. I don't think I'm as good as an Alvin Ailey dancer, of course, but like- I, we're, all, we're all Alvin Ailey dancers in our hearts. Exactly, exactly. That's how it works. And plus, they, their, their fitness regimen, like I got to get on board with that because I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what they doing, but they, yeah, they doing a very great job. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I saying? So basically, my mom she used to play these these music and songs, and I, she recognized I used to like pick out the alto part uh, rather than the melody um in song hey, so yeah. if you know like you're a singer the alto part is pretty difficult like that's like a it's, difficult it's, it's complex for for the viewers and listeners the alto part is the mo is one of the most complex lines mm -hmm. to follow yeah it's very weird but the altos they're like the soul of the choir you know and with them being the soul of the choir i was like i want to be you know, with that soul. Uh, and I remember in choir rehearsal, she was like, how about you direct this song? Yeah, I, I was like this little child, like <laughs> directing songs and directing like choir. Um, and like, it sounded good. That's when I knew, like, I want to do this. Um, mm. Yeah, like my mom, she's, she's the bomb, like, and so much inspiration in that woman, so much inspiration. Mm. I, I love it. I love it. We, so you started off as a kid directing the choirs, coming up you know, under the wing of your mother, a classically trained artist. And then when did you start making the transition out of just doing it for fun into like, you know, something that was actually a day-to-day -day reality for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was part of this group called Clovers and Company. Um, back in Georgia. Clovers and Company is an amazing group that's part of Georgia 4-H. Have you heard of Georgia 4-H at all? I mean, 4-H at all, the 4-H? 4-H yeah. is like the kids that are in the in the um, garden, right? Yeah, like agriculture and everything. <laughs> yeah, sorry. In my case... You're like, actually, that's actually called agriculture? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, 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 but I got you. I, don't, I got you. But like the thing about it... Uh, with me, I did the agricultural stuff because I think farmers, they need to be respected. They provide so much food for an entire population. And I think it's important to respect farmers, um, even though I don't agree with some farmers' politics. But, like, <laughs> the thing about wait, it... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Now, now I have to ask. Like, uh -huh, go ahead. If, if you put the star on it, I'm going to go to the bottom of the page. Please do. Um, what is the politic of farming that you don't agree with? The politics of farming, I feel like... Um, in Georgia, I've encountered some farmers who um, hold quite conservative beliefs, and I respect their beliefs to some okay, extent. Okay, I, I got confused. Like, I thought you were talking about the, the politics of the actual farming, like the like the politics of how they're like getting things. You're talking about like the fact that the in person rural populations, uh -huh. some of them, not all of them, people hold certain political beliefs that you don't align with. Yeah, exactly. I see. And, like, I see. Okay. And, like, even they know that. Like, even my conservative friends back at home, like, I challenge them all the time. Um, and, like, I think that's important because that's where dialogue comes in. Um, and I think 4-H, it was a great program where you get your voice. Like, we had so many different political backgrounds and identities. Um, and it was a beautiful program, especially for myself, because at one point, Black folks weren't um, you know, allowed to be a part of this program. It was segregated, basically. Um, and over time, because of Black leadership and great white comrades, I'll say, um, they were able to integrate this program. But the thing about it, I did agriculture stuff, but I also did performing arts. So Georgia 4-H, it has this huge performing arts program. Um, and In the 4-H, because what are, I, don't you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what are the 4-Hs? They stand for something, right? Heart, hand, health. Um, oh, my goodness, they're going to kill me. Heart, hands, health. And what is the other H? Hearts, hands, health. Health. And something else. Oh, my goodness, this is bad. Really? Healing. It's kill me. It's not. Hold on. <laughs> go, go on. Go on and look. Go on and look. Yeah, I'm going to look. 4-H. Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> Hearts, health. Head. Head, heart, hands, and health. That's okay. what it good. is. Good, 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 good. good. <laughs> yeah, I went blank. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. And, I'm sorry, Dr. Bone. And I knew. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but it's like yeah. we into the into the files of your mind. It's cool. And so oh, yeah. because, you, because they had head, heart, and all those things going on, mm -hmm. you were able to also use your art? 
Yeah, yeah. So I was able to use my art. And like people who came from clothes and companies, they're like professional singers. Like these people are huge. Just like Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland. Have you ever heard of Sugarland? She I was know, part I, of I know, I know who she Yeah, is. she was part of Clovers and Company. She's an amazing singer and I was able to perform with her in high school. And actually I performed with her again in New York. And that was my first time going to New York. Um, and I was like this high school boy, you know, I'm from the country. And like, uh, I saw country. New York and I was like, oh my goodness, this city is horrible. But I want to be here because I love it because it's like, uh, it's so different. You know what I mean? Where it's like, it's horrible. Where it's like, you know, it's so many people on top of each other and that's all this like that. But that I think really that's lot. the beautiful thing about New York City too. Uh, so it's like you have these several contradictions, which I think is amazing for artists because that gives us the moment to actually um, spread the messages throughout the city. Like wherever you have contradictions within social systems, that is where a beautiful art is made. And that's where I wanted to be. Even though I didn't think of it like that <laughs> when I was a high school student, right. now I think that's what I wanted to do. Um, and that and like I was featured on a show called Duets on ABC. It was like- um, You were on that show? Yes, I couldn't compete on the show, but I was featured singing with Jennifer Nettles. Um, and like, that's when like, I think John, John Legend, Jennifer Nettles, Robin Thicke, um, Kelly Clarkson, they were judges. Um, it had one season and like one of my friends, um, he was actually uh, a runner up on the show and he auditioned when they were having auditions, but I was too young um, to audition for the show. Um, and that was an amazing experience. And I think Clovers and Company definitely push me forth into like this professional realm of like um this is i can make this happen <laughs> and i can be damn good at it too you uh, know yes you can um, yes you can i just met you and i already believe that that's true that that's true <laughs> yeah. so tell me michael like um what do you do when you get stuck um in love city arts we always acknowledge that you know there are high moments low moments and everything in between. And so we can't pretend, um, we, we talked briefly before um, the start of the interview about the fact that Instagram culture and you know flexing for the gram and things like that have put us in a space where we feel like to be perfect is the goal, but we all know that's not true. We know that there are moments when, we, when we're low, when we're sad, when we're depressed, when we're not in, um, in great energy because we're comparing ourselves to other people and, and you know, you know, all that all that happens in your low moments. What do you do to help yourself navigate those waters and get unstuck? Mm. Oh yeah. I mean, I think in the music world, you know, you always have these ups and downs. Um, some days you like at the top, like, Oh, I'm going to get a publishing deal <laughs> uh, for like this one placement in the commercial or in this movie or whatever. And then you probably get to this point where you're like, okay, back to my day job. <laughs> Let me go back to my cubicle and type away on Excel, basically. And right. those are great moments too, because I'm learning a lot with great teammates and I'm learning different area that most artists don't get the opportunity to see, you know? So yeah, I see the you're, you're both, yeah, one part artist, one part geek. So yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Like these things don't have to be mutually exclusive, you know, mm -hmm. you can bring it together and make it work. And you could be, I guess, the cool person in the office <laughs> when people yes, talk yes. about um, yeah. what you're doing this weekend. That always happens. Um, but the thing about it, um, when I have those ups and downs, I just create. Um, that's where Primal Instinct came from. Uh, like I remember being in London um, and I started creating sleep. Um, I finished sleep. I started creating it in Georgia when I was on, like on break. But in London, um, I was just tired. Like, I was like, I'm working so hard. I'm trying to get an internship. Like, I had the internship. But it's like, I was like, how am I going to do all of this crap? Like, wh like what am I working for? What's the, what's the end goal here? Mm -hmm. um, and when I found out the end goal really isn't a thing, like, you're always just working, <laughs> um, you always got to create always got to create because that's how you get noticed that's how um like i was like that's how i was able to get in contact with you you get what i'm saying yeah, um, yeah, yeah. because we came across each other's content 
Um, and I think you contacted me on Twitter, and like I actually don't use Twitter <laughs> that often. Oh, that's right. You were the one that I had to chase down. You were like, I don't really come <laughs> over here much. My apologies. I don't. I don't come over to this fan box. And I'm just like, oh, but but I'm a, I'm gonna find you. Yeah, I need to be more active on Twitter though. I know, but it's just like Twitter. It's just it doesn't seem as positive to me. Um, oh, it's I got Instagram for sure. But it's only. But here's my here's my challenge to you and on this podcast and television show. If you're in the space, it's a little less negative than it was before you entered it. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. So you know I mean? like, <laughs> you know, because I, yeah. I was I was I was I go there um, seeking out artists to connect with that are that are just in my vibration, and so I read things from you, and I was like, oh yeah, like I'm really really down with him, like. This, this would be great to connect. And so it's what you're looking for. And that's a metaphor for life. Whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. Um, mm -hmm. You said that when you get stuck, you like to create. So are you keeping your laptop with you all the time? Is there a notebook that you're keeping for when you're inspired to kind of dig yourself mm -hmm. out? Like, what's your process? I'm gonna, um, so let's say if I have a song or something. Um, for one thing, I'm always playing piano when I'm like off, I don't know, just every free moment, um, I always build with like the chords. And mm. once I get the chords, I end up putting the lyrics to it. Let's say if I'm just on a train or something, I don't carry around a journal. Um, and I feel like most people, they see like an artist, they're like, oh, they must carry around a journal every time because you know, I'm artsy <laughs> and all this stuff. But it's not like you're, that. You're like, you're like not this artist, not today. No, not this artist. Cause to, oh, I'm like, I got my gym bag and all this stuff. I don't need another thing. <laughs> I probably got a book, but it's just like, um, I use my phone and I use my notepad. Um, uh, I love my little notepad on my iPhone, um, because I'm able to type right on the spot. Um, and you can, you can use your notepad anywhere, just about. Um, yeah, and I create those lyrics. Sometimes I'll record the chords using the voice recording, voice memo function on the iPhone, and I use that, um, and I'll just be playing it over and over in my head, and I try to write lyrics, match lyrics to it um, in the most random moments. Um, like, I remember one time I was out partying, I think somewhere in Bushwick, I forgot where, but like, um, I, I remember I just stepped out because I had this amazing idea for a song. I was like, yo, I'll be right back. I need to go outside. Uh, I need a breather. <laughs> like, and I remember I was sweaty and I was just a mess, but I have those moments and my friends, they recognize like Michael, he needs to recharge because I'm an extrovert, but I'm also very much so need those moments to recharge. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember I had that burst of creative energy and I was like, I was outside for about 30 minutes just typing away on my notepad. Um, yeah. So, so, so it sounds like, like another teachable moment in there. Is that like a, one way to get yourself unstuck from a creative block or to allow the creativity to flow through you is that in those moments when you feel inspiration, go for it. Like, le like evacuate. Like just leave. Go outside. Take that 30 minutes in order to, in order to make it happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, because if you don't have those moments, you'll drive yourself, you know, um, I, I don't know, you just, I, I don't like using the word crazy, but like, I knew you were, I knew you were tiptoeing around that word crazy. I was like, yeah, there's something in there, the and it's like, the like politics you know, of farmers and the word crazy. It's not. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I'm one of those, one of those. Uh, but it's like, you'll drive yourself mad, you know, because, um, Every single day, we're working, trying to find something to do next. How can I pay my next bills? Like I pay rent. Um, oh, I just yeah. Last night I was like, ooh, this huge chunk of change is gonna happen every thirty days for like the rest of it. Like, yeah, yeah. I saw a meme on Facebook. They were like, how? Do, why do we have to pay rent of the same amount of rent for February? And February is the shortest month. You hear what I'm saying? You, you're right. You're right. I like. We should have got a philosophical stuff there, you know? <laughs> um, Michael, you, you're, you're so deep. You're so deep. <laughs> you're so deep. Where, where, where can people find more of your deepness and dopeness on the internet? Yeah, so Instagram, um, I'm at Mike K. Woods. I'm not M-I-K-E, but M-I-C-H-K, 
Woods. Mm-hmm. Someone actually took M I K E. <laughs> but like, um, I'm at Mike K Woods. You can follow me on Twitter there. Also, Facebook, same thing at M I C H K Woods, consistent all across platforms. Um, Spotify, um, I have a very old project on Spotify called The Beginning. Um, and that was literally the beginning, but I'm glad I did it because um, I started getting traction. Um, like Soul Train wrote a review on that, and that was really great. Um, yeah, that was my first project. That was like in college. Um, cool, cool, yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. And so we'll check you. We'll check you out on all of those channels. Um, we'll be sure to listen to you on Spotify, um, and then of course we'll be looking forward to your project that's coming out next uh, yeah that's, that's amazing it's a very exciting time for you we're, we're really really glad to have met you yeah yeah sincerely, sincerely um i always end every um episode with the same three fill in the blanks and so i want to hear um what your answers to these are no pressure okay mm-hmm. uh love is Ooh. love is empathy Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like at this moment, we're like in a moment of crisis where people don't understand the other person because we don't see ourselves in this person's shoes. Um, we always try to get away from the fact that this other being is a beautiful human, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, people want to make us the same. Uh, I feel like we have forces that are trying to make us the same, but we can't be the same. Um, At the end of the day, nature is diverse. Nature is beautiful. And if you show that empathy for that other person who's a stranger, um, this world will be a much better place. I really do think that. Um, and I want to be a part of that diverse narrative. I am a part of that diverse narrative, you know, um, but I always try to give myself exercise those empathetic muscles for sure. Yeah. To see, to see myself and the other and the other as myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when true love comes out. You know, I think Cory Booker, he said, um, something about tolerance. Like he was like, he don't like using the word tolerance because in a way you like, you got to tolerate somebody. (laughs) Like, right, right. Like, what's up with that? Tolerate somebody like that doesn't. That's not love in its true form, you know. Um, that's not the love that I know, especially within the southern context. Like, my love is like, oh, come into my home. You want some food? You want this? You want that? You know. And it's like um, mm. that love. Ooh, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It is a beautiful thing. Oh wow! 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 wow. Joy is. Mm. Wow, wow. Joy is, oh my goodness, family. Yeah. <laughs> Joy is family. Uh, I've been, yeah, I've been watching this show. You know the show called Pose? Oh, love Pose. Yeah, love, I just started watching Pose. <laughs> you late to the party because the exactly. category is the category is you late. <laughs> yeah, and like the thing about Pose, these folks they had you know they were outed. I mean, they were you know. Oh, I just hate it when people don't love their child and they just throw them out the home basically because of who they want to be or their lifestyle choices. Um, but these folks in this show they chose their families you know Those houses the houses of yeah, the houses pop pose is all about these these houses that came together of queer people and trans people in in new york um in the in the 80s yep. and their chosen family dynamic it's amazing check it out so oh, go on it's really great and with them like the love that existed, the joy in these houses. I mean, also, you know, you didn't have so much joy um, in the House of Abundance, I believe. Uh, it's people, y'all watch the show. I'll just say don't, that. Yeah, but, don't, get, don't you spoil it for them. Like, I don't want to say it, everything. Don't exactly. <laughs> but like, the God. thing about it, the joy in these houses, even in House of Abundance, there was some joy, you know, at one point. There was a sense of love and care in that house, even though 
it was very different. But then you had the other house. What's the other house called? Um, uh, Eleganza? Yeah. The one that's, that's, no, that's, that's a more like a home. I think Eleganza is a real house. Um, yeah. House of Abundance and then... Uh, Oh my goodness! I forget the houses. I think Eleganza is like a legit, like a legit New York yeah. house. So let me not let me not get step on that great. But yeah. yes, but like in this other house, um, they were like she was building a home. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like they had so much joy, you know, after their lowest moments. You get what I'm saying? And um, and even my own family, like well, there's so much joy in my family. Um, I mean, even not even my intermediate family i'm talking about my friends my people who push me to be better than myself you know i love when people are honest with me and be like michael okay i hear you out but you can do better <laughs> you know um evangelista is the name of the house by the way evangelista, evangelista. there we go yes yeah yes. yeah but like she but was people, in the home yeah. but you said there are people that are pushing you to be better sorry to interrupt there are people that are pushing you in your circle to be better to be better and i, I definitely consider those folks family um and like i think new york when you're here by yourself um you get to choose another family you get what i'm saying and yeah be picky too like this is who i want around me because their energies are great if yeah, energy yeah. Is toxic or you know you about that ego um i don't i don't want that energy around me like, i don't need that energy um and i i mean just like how you were saying the vibrations, it's important, it's so important. And you can literally feel those vibrations off of folks. Um, I, I call it like a Southern intuition, <laughs> a black Southern intuition, I think, where it's like, um, I could spot BS a mile, a mile away. away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and all my friends know that. And we are real with, really with each other. <laughs> and I can tell, I can tell that you're not playing any games either. You're like, look, I saw it, I know it. I, that, that's all I need to know. Like, it's good. It's good. Exactly. Your last fill in the blank is freedom is. Ooh. Well, freedom is revolution. I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you can't do, you can't do a mic drop. Like that, like what? What do, you, what do you? I see you with the Obama mic drop. What do you mean when you when you say freedom is a revolution? What are you meaning? A revolution of what? Oh yeah, everything you just mentioned. This radical love, the idea of true joy, the idea of like being conscious about the problems at hand and trying to fix it on a daily basis. You know, creating a revolutionary politics um, that love everybody. I truly mean love every single person. Um, and I feel like in order for things to change, um, we got to make some noise. I really do. Um, and I hate, I, like, with me, I'm a political science major. I always talk about politics. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sure the news is charging you all the way up. Oh, well, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. And I feel like people come up with the most um, lukewarm analyses when they talk about these moments, you know. Um, they only grace the surface of these um, contentious moments. But it's so much deeper. Everything is systemic. Um, everything needs to be analyzed in a nuanced manner. And I think artists... We're part of that. Um, Nina, Nina Simone said, you got to um, create for the times, basically. You know, that's not to her exact words, but basically, like, right. your, your music got to reflect on the times. And I try to do that. I really try to do that. And I know I'm going to fail over and over again. <laughs> and I know yeah. I'm going to have some successes in that. I mean, I know I'm going to make people uncomfortable. Um, but I think freedom is revolution. Freedom has always been about revolution. Um, yeah, a beautiful revolution. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, uh, Michael K. Woods, for bringing your freedom and your revolution into our show today. Like, I'm so grateful to have met you and so grateful to have had you on. I'm so glad that I was able to do this. <laughs> and thank you for the work you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.